Hey everyone, it's Abyss, and in this video, I'm gonna show you another romance guide. All right, so let's go over some tips and tricks. At the top right-hand corner of the screen, you're gonna see dislike and like. If you see a dislike come up, then reload an autosave and try again. You wanna build up as many likes as you can possible because this is gonna help you towards your romance. Now, one of the best ways of doing that is unlocking the persuasion skill and leveling it up. So that's gonna help you out a lot because if you can talk your way out of fighting or solving the situation peacefully, all your companions are going to like that. One of the next things that you can look out for is during the conversation if your companion's name come up. Always select that option because they like that too. Now, once you build up enough likes, you're gonna hear your companion say something like, hey, can I talk to you? If you miss that conversation, you can always look in your activity log and see if it's there, but have that conversation with your companion and do not click through it too fast because you wanna look for the flirt option and always select that and then rinse and repeat. Build up a bunch of likes, have that conversation with your companion, and then over and over again. Now with Sarah, it's gonna take you five different random conversations where you're gonna select flirt every time, and then you're going to get her companion mission. Just like the other ones, at the very end, you'll have the option to pick friendship or romance. So select romance if you wanna continue on. Then about an hour or two later, you'll get the commitment talk. So select commitment if you wanna continue on. And then another couple hours later, that's when you're gonna get the commitment ceremony. So for the rest of the video, I'm gonna show you how to complete her full companion mission. I'll show you the commitment talk, the commitment ceremony, and how to end the commitment. Keep in mind, I will have full guides on how to complete all of the romances. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to help support the channel, and I'll see you next time. Trip that landed not too long ago. Pardon. Sarah Morgan. It's been, what, almost ten years? Admiral, it's, uh, good to see you again, sir. You're not required to address me as sir. That protocol ended the moment you dropped your clusters on my desk, remember? Look, Admiral, I'm not here to open old wounds. Old wounds is an interesting turn of phrase, given our past. Listen to me, Commander. I'm not sure why you're here, but whatever it is, why don't you just get to it? I'm here because I need your help, Admiral. You need my help. That's interesting. The last time we spoke, you made it quite clear that you were turning your back on the Navy. That was a decade ago. Things change. People change. Admiral, please. I didn't come here to argue. I'm here to come to terms with my past. Your past is sitting in a closed file in the archives. That's where you left it when you walked out on the United Colonies. And what about you? Just who in the blazes are you anyway? Very well. Then, as a good friend, perhaps you could kindly explain to me why I shouldn't have the both of you escorted from the building. With all due respect, Admiral, this is ridiculous. If you have a problem with me, then there's no need to berate my colleague. I don't have a problem with you, Commander. I'm simply trying to determine why you deserve the Navy's help. That's quite a noble gesture. Is this true, Commander? It's about Cassiopeia, Admiral. I'm heading back there to find out what happened to the crew of the Dauntless, and hopefully, to bring their legacy home. That sounds like a dangerous operation. Are you certain it's worth the risk? I... I don't know. I see. The fact that you'd risk your own lives to solve this mystery speaks volumes. They were my responsibility, Admiral. One way or another, I intend to bring them home. I understand. And I believe I owe you an apology, Commander. Our last encounter has obviously distorted my impression of your character. What can I do to help? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to access the files regarding my rescue, 
I'd be most grateful, Admiral. That shouldn't be too difficult. I've sent all the relevant information to your slaves. Was there anything else? No, Admiral. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, Commander. I just hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. Feels like walking into a dream. No, no. I'll be fine. Phew. Okay, so let me get my bearings for a moment. Yes. Yes, this looks correct. Those rock formations nearby look familiar. My old campsite shouldn't be far. Good. <sighs> Once we get to the campsite, We'll use that as a starting point to search for the cruise shuttle wreckage. <sighs> Let's go. This is it. This is the spot where I spent close to a year waiting for rescue. Not exactly Paradiso, is it? It was difficult and painful, but it kept me alive. It was home. Look at this thing. It's been sitting here rusting. I think we need to grab an emergency power cell to get the ship's computer up and running. Sure, if we're lucky. When I was stranded, I set up a distress beacon powered by emergency power cells. The beacon was up there on the plateau. I guess it's time to start climbing. some debris from my shuttle. Not exactly a textbook landing, but I didn't have much of a choice.
Why are we stopping? I hope that emergency power cell can revive the shuttle's computer. Probably saved my life. Who knows how long I would have been stranded here. We've located where the other shuttle went down. I can't believe our plan worked. And so modest, too. Hmm. The telemetry data puts the wreckage out of range to hike. We're going to have to head back to the ship and land on a different part of the planet. Let's get going. circumstances. I might have had more time to appreciate the beauty it has to offer. I'll shoot if I have to. Just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. Oh my god. Who are you? I'm nobody. Just go away. I'm not going to let anyone take my stuff again. No way. Both of you, just go! Yeah, sure. Try and trick me. No. No way. I I'm not getting fooled again. Forget it! Stop it right now! Put away that gun and talk to us. We want to know what happened here. See? You're not nice at all! I knew it! You're a liar. That's all grown-ups do is lie! Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I was wrong to get so angry. We are here to help you, and we promise to tell the truth. I don't know. You're kind of scaring me. Why should I listen to you? The crew? No one's been looking for that crew since before I was born. So tell me another lie. Go ahead. You were born here? Hold on. Oh my god. Your parents? Your mum and your dad? What were their names? Jenna and Elias. Why? 
Jenna and Elias. Private Jenna Marsh and Corporal Elias Oberist. You're their daughter. Listen to me. I knew your parents. They worked with me on the Dauntless. I'm Commander Sarah Morgan. You're Sarah Morgan? Mom and Dad's captain? My parents used to talk about you all the time. It's like a dream to finally meet you. Yeah, well, you're too late. My parents are dead. My father died a long time ago, and my mother, she was killed by those, those monsters at the graveyard. It's just me here now, all by myself. Let me ask you a question. Oh, actually, I don't even know your name. Oh, yeah. My name's Sona. Sona. <laughs> what a lovely name. Sona, you mentioned a graveyard. Is that where the crew is, um, you know? Buried? Yeah. It's a bunch of stones with those necklaces like the ones my mom and dad had hanging on them. Thank you, Sona. I'm going to talk to my friend here a minute, okay? Okay, Sarah. Phew. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Yeah, this isn't what I expected at all. Oh, there's so much to process. But I don't have time to deal with it right now. If you want to help, then find that graveyard and bring me those necklaces Sona mentioned. I'm hoping they're my crew's gene tags. Good. Just be careful. Sona's monsters are undoubtedly hostile life forms that have claimed the graveyard as their territory.
Sona, calm down and listen to me. It's much too dangerous to stay here all by yourself, darling. I don't care. This is my home. You can't make me leave. We can't leave her here. It's not safe. She has to come back with us to Jemison. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can you talk to her? I knew I could depend on you. Now all we have to do is convince this poor girl that she's better off leaving the planet with us. I just... I don't know if I have it in me to say the right things. I can hear you talking about me. And I don't care what either of you say. I'm not going anywhere. Look, I'm clearly out of my element here and not in the right state of mind. Could you just talk to her, please? Why won't Sarah listen to me? I've been alone for a long time, and even when bad people visit, I've been safe. That still doesn't mean I should leave the only home I ever had, does it? Mom told me there were really bad people out there. Worse than the ones I've already seen. But uh, leaving mom and dad behind, it's really hard. Even though they're dead, I don't want to abandon them. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry I yelled at everybody. I know you and Sarah are just trying to help. I'm going to go get my stuff and then I'll board your ship. Don't worry, I'll stay out of the way until we get... Well, wherever we're going. That poor girl. I hope we've made the right decision. Oh, I do hope that's true. We're ripping Sona from the only home she's ever known, and casting her back into society. It's going to be difficult for her to adjust to the changes. Wherever she ends up, just promise me we'll check on her from time to time, please. Thank you. Look, um, before we leave Cassiopeia behind, I wanted to say one more thing to you. Perhaps at the overlook we passed on the way here? I promise it won't take long. Let's go. Look, before we head back to the ship, I wanted to tell you how much of an amazing gift this has been. You had to push me to come out here, and if I hadn't have listened to you, the universe would probably have never known about that little girl. Oh yes, absolutely. And it's all thanks to you. You know... This is the second time I've been on this world. 
And until this very moment, I never stopped to reflect at just how magnificent it was. Oh, look at this place. This is the reason I'm out here, exploring the stars. Worlds upon worlds just waiting to have their beauty discovered. Shedding this burden of my past has finally allowed me to open my eyes, wider than they've ever been opened before. And it's all because of you. Perhaps. I suppose we'll both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? <sighs> well, I suppose it's time to bid goodbye to Cassiopeia once again. This time, under much happier circumstances. Now, let's head back to Jemison. I want to give those gene tags you gathered to Admiral Logan and figure out what we're going to do with Sona. So, are you eating at the Sage Brook, or is it just a quick snap from the Terra Brew? You will be scanned as you enter the city. How's it going? Congratulations on making Class 1, Captain. Welcome back. Did you find your answers? Not only that, but we found someone there. Alive. A child born from two of the crew that survived the crash. After her parents died, that poor girl spent years surviving on that hostile world. Alone. We abandoned her, Admiral. We let her down. I'm sorry. I had no idea. How could we have possibly known? Yes, of course. I think we can all agree that this was another unfortunate circumstance of the Colony War. What you'd call an unfortunate circumstance, I call a tragedy. You're absolutely right, Sarah. It is a tragedy. One thing that I can assure you is that the names of these men and women will never be forgotten. I'll see to it personally. Thank you, Admiral. Good luck to both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the Lodge. While we're here, perhaps we should check in with Matteo or Noel. Yeah? Did you want to talk about something? There you are. I was wondering when he'd come and say hi to me. Hello, Sona. I see you found your way to the Lodge without any trouble. Yeah, it was kind of hard though. All these people around. Never seen so many people in my entire life. Yeah, it was. I guess I'll have to be brave. You're already one of the bravest people I've ever met. So, what do you think? Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge! I mean, I've never seen anything like it. 
You must be like a bazillionaire, Sarah. <laughs> oh, don't I wish. This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation. And I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Wow. Does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait, do I get my own ship? <laughs> well, uh, Auntie Sarah can't exactly afford that right now, but she can provide you with the best exploration training in the galaxy. I understand. Oh, and don't worry, I learn real fast, so you better get ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well, I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the Colony War Memorial now. I want to, uh, to pay my final respects. Say that we have nothing for it's amazing to think that this tree predates New Atlantis. Mm. Can you imagine all the changes it's seen? These people, their entire lives distilled down to names on a memorial. I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name. I am proud. <laughs> I was simply too foolish to realize it until you changed my perspective. And I care about you too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that I think we need to discuss. Just let me have another moment here and then we can head over to the waterfall so we can talk in private. I'm ready. Let's go.
When things at the lodge are too much, I love coming to this spot to just sort of, I don't know, melt away for a while. It's lovely here, isn't it? <laughs> I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other, but this place, this exact spot, there's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. I knew you'd appreciate it. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. That's actually why I asked you to meet me up here. <clears throat> I was hoping we could talk about something very important. Good, because I have a lot to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy, but that young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. Maybe, but for how long? I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps, <laughs> hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. Are you sure? For all we know, it's in my nature to keep people at arm's length. Or worse push them away. Right now? Are you talking about Constellation? Or what exactly are you saying? Ha! Huh. <laughs> Sorry, I am... Um, I... I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. I know you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So, if you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you, always. I received a message from my mother a few days ago. She's returned from another one of her sightseeing cruises. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. We never discussed this, did we? The thing is, my mother and I don't talk very much. We're not estranged or anything of the sort. We're just far apart. Sure, when you're younger. But as soon as you get older and they begin controlling your life, that's when you need to strike out on your own. Oh, I'm certain they felt they were doing the right thing. You see, both of my parents were diplomats working under the flag of the UC Administrative Division. After I completed my basic education, they signed me up for a one-year apprenticeship in their department, without bothering to ask. 
Mm. Wanted isn't the right word. Demanded would be more appropriate. For my apprenticeship, I was sent to Sidonia. My job consisted of drafting political policies and arbitrating trade disputes. The silver lining of the job was that it allowed me to spend time exploring every square inch of Mars. I was swallowed by it. Months before the apprenticeship ended, I dumped my diplomatic certification and joined the UC Navy. Of course, my parents didn't approve. We had a huge argument that resulted in all ties being severed between us. Well, that wasn't the worst of it. You see, my father was killed during the opening shots of the Colony War. I returned to Jemison for the funeral and reunited with my mother. After that, we vowed to stay in touch. <laughs> Aren't you sweet? Always concerned with how I'm feeling. That's why I fell in love with you. Your smile, your caring. <laughs> it brightens even my darkest days. Listen, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. All this talk of family, it makes me wonder where our own relationship stands. <laughs> you mean that? You'd do that? For me? I've been dreaming about this moment and still... I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes! Yes! Of course! Yes! Ah, I just need a little time to think about the ceremony. I have some thoughts about how we should move forward. You know... I used to dream about finding the love of my life. And here you are. All I ever needed was you, right here beside me. So, I've given everything we've discussed a lot of thought, and I've decided I'd like Aja Mamasa to conduct our marriage ceremony. I knew you'd understand. So, with that settled, I suppose we just keep it a quiet ceremony? Just the two of us? Oh, that's sweet of you to suggest, but I think bringing Sona all the way to Arja's home would be too much anxiety for the poor girl. We need to give her some time. All right, it's settled then. I'll send a message to Aja, asking for her to preside over the ceremony. As soon as you're ready, let's head to Paradiso. <laughs> I can't tell you how much this means to me. I love you. Hydrogen? Hydrogen. It's all here. As we were landing, I picked up a message from Aja. She said to meet us at the park overlooking the ocean. Before we go to the ceremony. I want you to look me in the eyes and tell me this is exactly what you want. Ah, oh, I just melt when I hear you say things like that to me. I love you, and I'm forever thankful to have someone as amazing as you in my life. Now come on, Aja is waiting for us.
I shouldn't be telling you this. Everyone is present. We will begin. We're waiting until everyone arrives. Just a few moments for everyone to take their places. It's so lovely to see you, Sarah. It's wonderful to see you too, Aja. This is the one I told you about. I've heard a lot about you. All of it good. You're quite a catch. Ten seconds in and already you're embarrassing everyone. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure that you are right for Sarah. She's quite special, hmm? Oh, God. Now you're embarrassing me. <laughs> That's called love, my dear. You better get used to it. Well, I've seen enough. I can read people the moment I lay eyes on them. And you, you're going to make Sarah quite happy. Coming from you, Aja, that means a lot. Of course, Sarah. You know I always look out for you. Now, are we ready to begin the ceremony? Very well. If everyone's ready, then I'll begin. It's been years since Sarah Morgan and I have spoken. And though it might appear that we've grown apart, I feel that we've become closer friends than ever before. When I received the message with Sarah's intent to marry, and that she wanted me to officiate the ceremony, <laughs> I was overwhelmed with joy. Not because she had decided to rekindle our friendship, but because she was allowing me to share the happiest moment of her life. I can't imagine a greater honor. And for that, Sarah, I thank you. I wouldn't have had it any other way, Aja. Before you present your vows, I'd ask both of you to remember that love is what brought you together today. It is a foundation upon which a structure of trust, faith, an affirmation is built. This structure can be absolutely impenetrable if you both agree to love each other unconditionally with faith, devotion, and acceptance. And most importantly, to allow yourself to be loved. Remember, there are no other bonds more meaningful than the one you are undertaking today. You should cherish this moment and hold it close to your hearts as a reminder of the love you share. If you both are willing to abide by these words, then you can be assured that your lives will be filled with joy and happiness forever. That was beautiful, Asha. Thank you. Did you need a moment, Sarah? No. No, I'm fine. But I wanted to say something before you continue. When we stood beside that waterfall in New Atlantis, you told me that I needed to forget the past and focus on what I have right now. I swear with every fiber of my being that the past will no longer be an obstacle in my life. And I will honor your words by focusing my affection on the most important thing in my life. You, this is my solemn pledge to you. From deep within my heart, from deep within my soul, for all eternity. And you? Did you have anything you wanted to say to Sarah? Thank you. <laughs> oh. oh, you're going to make me cry. 
You had a gift, Sara? Yes. I wanted you to have this as a token of our love. I'm giving this to you as a symbol of the clean break I've made from my past. Oh, it would have been impossible without your help. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. With these promises of affection and these vows you've exchanged, by the power vested in me by the Articles of Constellation, I happily pronounce you life mates. Congratulations! Aja, I don't know what to say. That was... Oh, amazing. <laughs> I couldn't imagine having the ceremony without you. I'm glad everything worked out for you, Sara. I'm only sorry that we waited so long to reach out and contact one another. It was my pleasure. Well, you're both welcome to stay here for as long as you like. So, I guess this is goodbye for now. I wish the both of you a happy and healthy life together. I'll never forget this, Aja. Thank you. I'm happy to host Abigail here at my home. She's quite charming. What's happening, darling? I wouldn't trade my life with you for anything else in the universe. What? I... I don't understand. Why? I can't believe you'd say that. You've provided me all of the attention and love that I'll ever need. And more. Was I asking too much? Ah. <sighs> My heart feels like it's been ripped out of my body. Look, if our marriage ends today, then it ends forever. I can't go through this again. Please, don't do this. Then it's over. Now, I'm going to need some time to myself. Please. Leave me alone for a while. I need to think. <sighs>